Did you know you can customize the column widths in Divi if the standard ones aren't working out for you? My name is Michelle and I've got a quick Divi tutorial for you today. But first, don't forget to hit the like button if you find this information helpful. And please subscribe. I release weekly videos on marketing, web design, and content creation strategies. All right, let's go customize some columns. In today's example, I am going to show you how to customize the column widths in my Divi footer. So right now I'm in the theme builder, so things might look a little bit different than they usually do when you're building on a page, but the theme builder gives a great option to make global elements such as footers and headers. And so I'm going to customize these column widths because let's say that, you know, I want this one to be a little bit bigger and maybe this one a little bit smaller. So it's very easy to do. So if I were to just show you really quickly on something that I don't already have content in, I would add a new row. And this is where you get to decide how many columns do you need? So do you need two, three, four, five, six? Probably don't need any more than that, but this is gonna at least start you off on an equal footing. So in the example I have above, I have four. So I'm just gonna choose that really quickly. I'm not gonna add any modules yet because I wanna go through the settings first of what you need to do. Now, a couple of things. We'll go into the row settings here and then in the design tab, we'll go into sizing. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to use a custom gutter width. Its default is at three. We wanna take that down all the way to one. This will eliminate any space in between each column. We don't need to equalize the column heights unless that's something that you wanna do. But I do want to show you that I usually set my max width to 100%. You can leave this at 80%. That is 100% fine. If you want to go all the way across your page, you could also set this to 100%. The math that we're gonna go through isn't going to be affected by the width of your actual row. So just keep that in mind. If you want to have that little bit of space, you know, I would probably recommend anything between 80 and 90. So if 80 is usually where I kind of default to, if I need it to go beyond that, maybe let's say for this example, we'll just do 90%. And that's just 90% of the width of the page. And then each internal module section that we have is 25% currently. And why is it 25%? Because if I divide 100% of the row width by four, I know that 25 is currently where things are sitting. So I can hit save on that and then I can adjust different column width. I'll show you my adjustment with the column width I have above here. So let's go back up to this row. I am going to adjust the sizing. It's currently at 80. We'll set that to 90%. And now I want to go back to the content tab. So in the content tab, I can see each of my individual columns, column one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to need to go in and set the width for each of these columns. How I do that is I click on the gear. I'll go to the advanced tab. We'll go into custom CSS. And in the main element, I want to type in width colon the percentage that I want it to be. And then I do need to mark it as important so that the setting does take effect. So now you can see that that column is significantly smaller than what it was. I'll go back, we'll make a new adjustment. We're in column two now, go to the advanced tab, custom CSS, main element, and determine what width you want. For this one, I am gonna set it at 25, and then we'll go back to do the third, advanced, custom CSS. We'll do 25 for this middle one as well. And then back arrow to the fourth column, advanced tab, custom CSS, and then main element. We're gonna set this width to 35. So why did I choose these numbers? 15, 25, 25, and 35, that equals 100. You'll, you'll want to make sure that you're equaling 100 and that you're not going over 100. If it goes over 100, you're probably going to see something break. So now that I have those set, I can see that things are a little more spaced out. And let me move this around so that you can see. I like that this is bigger now because I wanted more room for a form. 
and I wanted my logo smaller. I feel like those are a little too spaced out, but you know, that's easily solvable. A lot of these numbers that you are going to come up with are just gonna have to be trial and error until you get the right percentage, but it's good to know that you can completely customize the width of them. So if I go back to the design tab where we first were and go to the sizing, I think 90% might be too big. So if I go back down to 80, this feels a lot more balanced. I've got my logo here, I've got two columns for information, and then I've got my sign up form. So if I'm happy with this, I can hit the save. I'm gonna get rid of this row because I was just using that as a demonstration. The other thing that you wanna make sure that you check is for different devices. So if I go and check for my tablet, I can see that what I've done is actually gone through, I've made it one column by making everything 100%. And I did the same for the mobile phone so that everything stacks up and arranges nicely. How do I do that? Let's go back to desktop view and I will show you that. All I need to do is go back into my row settings. We'll go, we'll make this guy a little bit bigger. Let's go back into each individual column. We would go to the advanced tab where custom CSS. And in the main element, I did enable the device type so that I can customize it for each tablet and phone. So when I go into tablet, all I've done is I've set the width to 100% and the same goes for mobile. So I've done that for each column to ensure that everything looks good no matter what device you are on. If I wanna go back and add a little bit more padding underneath each of these modules, that's something I could completely do. To do that, I would go to each individual module and then I would click the design tab, go to spacing, and then if I needed to, if I thought I needed to increase each of these, I could. So we could go 30 pixels there. We could do the same with spacing 30 pixels. I'll hit save. And then don't really need to worry about this last one. So let's check our work. And we can see that we've got a little bit more space in between each element, which looks great. And really that's all there is to it. Now, if you like this layout, you can easily purchase it on my website, michellethecreator.com. I will be selling different Divi layouts, including different headers and footers that you can use. If you wanna make your web creation process a little simpler, I am happy to help you out. Did you find this information helpful? If so, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate your support. If you have questions on how I did anything today, just leave those in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.